it looks like here in the Caribbean, mooring balls, or at least the Windward Islands and here in BVI, mooring balls is the thing. And I've heard Bahamas is also the thing. So how do we catch a mooring ball? And that is what this episode is going to be about. So there's a few things and a few preparations that need to do before you start catching a mooring ball. So let us first discuss the three different four different ones. <laughs> Sisu included because we're always different. So <clears throat> let me show you the, the different options that's available and then you need to prepare for those options. So from, from our side we don't have much to prepare um, but on the other options you need to prepare something. Taking one line and then go over the, the, the beam. There's a roller normally on the beam, but this one, as you can see, takes a lot of strain. And the one on Sisu also. Even the one on Sisu was bending, so it takes a lot of strain on the boat. And then. <laughs> Good morning. And then it goes all the way there to the cleat that's at the, at the capstan or close to the windlass. So this is the setup of a, a bow roller. The issue with one line is that the boat will swing quite a lot. So because you're losing the bridle effect and because you lose the bridle effect you the catamaran, especially the catamaran, starts sailing quite a lot. It swings quite a lot. Now let's look at another setup. So the other way is to put it onto the bow cleats and then you take it on the inside to the mooring ball. And the same happened on that side. So, and, and the way they, they catch it is they take one long, long line and then first catch, lift this mooring ball put it through and bring it back. Then the boat is already on one line. Then it's easy to pull this one up, bring that line in, and then use that line. And then you can also um, tension it the way you want. As you can see, these guys have tensioned it quite good. So it's very close to, to the boat. So the boat will not easily bump into that. Um, but the thing is, it shapes over here as you can see, so over time, and it's also chafing on the, there on the deck. And that's that one, so let's look at another setup. Merci beaucoup! And then there's yet another way. <laughs> so, you can tie it onto the bow cleats, you bring it on the outside, and then from here you take it then to the mooring ball. So the way to catch it is the same, you do have to tie one up, catch the, catch the mooring ball, and then when you caught it, you just tie it up, and then that one is then free to be tied up at your own leisure. Um, but normally they do it while the engine is still running and so on. So then you just tie another one up, take it through the loop, and then take it to the opposite bow cleat. Now the problem here, as you can see, it chafes here, and this noise will make a lot of chafing noise as well. So this is yet another setup. Sometimes it goes over and then it will touch the, the pulpit, which will also make a different issue then, that you rubbing us against the stainless steel. Now this is an interesting part. Because it can also chafe the whole time here by going up and down, like now. <laughs> it's jumping up and down, so it makes little chafing over there. So normally, you will put it one and another loop to prevent chafe, but there's not enough space for these lines to go through more than once. 
so it is a problem <laughs> and then of course we have sisu so sisu is working a little bit different than the ones that i showed you now okay so this baby a mantis mooring ball shackle we will put on the end of our old bridle This is quite heavy. Here we go. So that will then hook onto onto the mooring ball. <laughs> this, I'm sure this could double up as an anchor as well. It's really heavy. So that would be on the front then. And then I've got oh, That end is sorted, and then I bought these two shackles to go on the ends of the old bridle, and then they will also and this would hook onto the D shackle or the other shackle currently where the existing bridle is on. So we're gonna leave that bridle on and then just hook this one onto it. So it's gonna have two shackles into each of those other shackles. So we have two bridles. One bridle for the anchor chain hook, which I will explain now. And then one for, for the mooring for the mooring ball over there in the sun. So how this works is we are we, we know we can rely on that that fitting over there because our anchor was now a couple of times there. So we just added another bridle here which we then on this side we attached the uh, a mantis a mantis um, mooring quick release shackle it is a very pretty heavy setup very strong so you only need to pull this line here to disconnect and even then it will not disconnect completely you need to basically this arm you need to lift it out of the mooring i'm not going to quick release it now because as you can see the wind is a little bit coming so <laughs> just now sisu is disappearing there and yeah you know what happens then um, but it's very easy so when we come in we just need to lift up the leader line or sometimes in the mooring ball there's a leader line you just pick it up put the hook through and clip it in and then box your ankle we are we are set so we set pretty fast very quick um, other guys are taking a little bit more time but for us this works quite well so we just have this connected to the like a bridle okay while we're now here in front let's talk about our anchor bridle for when we're on anchor so this is the anchor bridle then there's two problems with a bobstay the bobstay is this little wire here or cable that keeps the bow spread from going going up um, because we have a big code D connected to that that end over there so the bob size is just to keep to prevent the bow spread to go up but it has a problem because if you if you put your bridle below the line like this and the moment the wind is pushing Sisu backwards like that way then this will start coming up like this and it will chafe onto this cable here if we put it like this then no chafing is happening because it will just go up like this it will not go against this one but when we at sea then when we at sea then we put the bridle we need to bring the bridle there because that's where we attach it and we detach it so it means then this one is, is folded like this so because it's folded like this 
with the with the cable on top the waves will hit like this the whole time and then the chafing will happen right there so I tried something else and I put a little block here and I just tied with Dyneema to the top there and then through the block I put a loop so this loop is then tied off or tightened through there so if I loosen this one, this loop will open up, this one here, will open up and then this one will, will expand and we have a bridle. So for us to get away that it doesn't chafe against the, so it will be like this. So the waves very rarely come here, it normally eats over here. And we reduce the chafe then on the anchor bridle during passage so it looks like a lot of lines here but there is a purpose for each one that's why it's not ropes anymore it's now a line because we have purpose and that's it so you need to decide whether your beam is going to because our bow kit is over there and you need to make sure that if you bring a line over here where there's going to be chafing here where there's going to be chafing on your deck over there or if you bring it out whether you are happy with the chafing that's happening on the side so some catamarans are designed differently here in front so you can you can select the option that's the best for you but for us we decided we will use the the same place where the anchor bridle is is connected and then use that one so we use the anchor bridle together with the mantis hook it works for us you just need to decide which will which one will work for you and then go with that one um, but this is the various options that that i've seen so far my nose are different um, so you need to have a different setup for a mono, but this is for cats. If you use one of the cleat options, then you need to get your, your mooring lines out. If you use the two cleat options, then you need to have two of these lines and you have to then cleat them onto the bow cleat. So one of the cleats that's closest to the bow. Some catamarans like the leopard, we have these ones, but they say don't put any load on it. So we don't put any load on it, otherwise, or you, we don't know why. It just says don't use that. They just say don't use it for load bearing stuff, like mooring. So we don't. Um, so it is then up to, up to the bow cleats. So we need to the entire line there. One of the options by using the, the cleat over there is to have a long enough line it goes all the way to the back so and you have to take it outside of the shrouds of course and the person can stand there at a very low level and if you're here it's very easy to get to the ball i was mentioning tension tensioning up on the cleats which is sometimes a serious issue if there's always a wind it's not a problem if but for all, any reason possible um, you get into a wind still day or if the current is reversing like 100 percent like this you might be pushed into the ball and it will be clang 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 against the hull one of the hulls or that one and then on this one <laughs> depends on how how the tide the currents goes and the, and the movement of the boat then you need to tensioning up so that the mooring ball is actually between the two hulls the closer it is to between the holes, the less bridle effect you have. And the less bridle effect you have, the more the cat will swing around the ball. So it just means you have a single line connected to two, two things. That's actually what it means. So in this case, in, in the case where we are now, you can see there goes Sisu's bridle and we're connected to that point right there. 
but the mooring ball is actually over there so they've got a very long leading line so it will be kind of like impossible to tighten up because of that long leader line because that ball will definitely reach one of the holes this side or this side so then we need to maybe catch it closer to the ball and then when it's closer to the ball you can then also bring the ball in between the holes and make the lines as tight as possible that it doesn't get to one of the holes to make a big noise during the night it always happened during the night during the day it's always behaving but at night three o'clock in the morning it will start bang bang then a very very vital thing that you need to have is one of these so if you can see it has an ear cap one side with a microphone on the other side and this one is just a clip on so if you put it on you look like a spaceman like one of those guys that sent some SpaceX Merlin engines or Raptor engines up so and this is how this works and then the other person that's going to help to catch the ball also have another one like this so this is very very important to have if because of this we can just talk and the one in front because you you might not see the mooring ball at one point but it's still like 10 meters out so the other one in front needs to tell you okay it's now eight meters five meters six meters whatever the case might be and go a little bit left go right stop now stay there or when the boat starts moving or drifting okay don't go left go right whatever the case might be so this is very very important to have if you have one of these a set of these it is definitely a marriage saver so it's very simple they work with bluetooth and they connect it via bluetooth and you just need to keep the batteries charged and that will keep your marriage <laughs> intact <laughs> so charge your batteries and let's see now in real life how we catch these these balls so we are approaching now the mooring balls and Peter just gave me now this marriage saver thingy and you need to plan before the time a little bit so look at the wind direction that's the first thing that you need to be constantly aware of but also now look at whether there's other traffic coming in I can see two huge passenger ships but they still tied on but I can see this taxi is already busy putting out some smoke so it means they are almost ready and then also some of the mooring balls are numbered so you cannot take any mooring ball here here in BBI but otherwise if it's a white one you can first come first serve so find out the mooring ball that you want and you can look at the wind or the direction of the wind so that if you closer to the shore less disturbance and stuff like that but also check for the depth on your chart so if you check the depth on the chart make sure that you can actually moor on that ball because not all of them don't assume that because there's a mooring ball that you will have a room below and a room around um, so some of these mooring balls especially these ones that have been before they are a little bit close to each other so I need to make sure that we are catching the right one and then some of the mooring places have uh, like a, a channel that's going into the mooring so you need to make sure that you follow the channel don't just go between the boats I don't like it when guys just like cut through and, and you're not sure that the guy can actually do what he's supposed to do and the wakes and all of those things so I'd rather follow the channel now the wind back to the wind so the wind is very important I can see the wind is coming now from from our 120 here so it's somewhere at the back so I will need to turn completely like this and come around come about so that I need to make a plan as well so make sure that you can 
that you can catch a ball and turn into the wing and then be ready because you have to catch a ball going into the wing. The straighter into the wind, the easier it's going to be. Definitely. Okay. Let me switch you guys off and put you on a different spot. So, I like to start with two engines. So, two engines. And let's put it on standby so I can turn. We're in the channel at this moment. And we're going to catch. No, which one? Which one? Which one? So these things are very important. These marriage saver microphones. Okay. Yeah, there's a ferry. So we're also looking for ferries. If you see a, if you see a ferry dock, stay away from the ferry dock. Or just this one right here. Now we're only going to be here for one night. Okay, I'm turning now towards the morning ball. I think you guys, the camera is going to be horribly on your side because we're going to turn into the sun. So I hope that's going to work. And then when I turn, after I turn, I'm going to put, I'm going to lock this one. my two engines so I'm putting the port side in reverse I can still see the ball I've got the ball okay so I'm going to turn now like this so I'm pivoting my engines is now like this steering is locked I can still see it you must be 100% into the wind so I'm still turning Everything looks good and the ball, the, your boat didn't break the line, you can switch off the engines and I like to stay a little bit here, up here and just to make sure that we're swinging alright and that everyone around us is happy. So I'm going to wait a little bit here. A very important thing that you need to look at if you catch the the leader line or the mouse line make sure that that line is is good and strong if not the real thing that you actually need to catch is on the ball itself so you just need to make sure that yes if this one is good and strong as the ones on the ball and it will hold your boat take the leader line but if not you need to take it right there at the ball but we can see now the chain is there so it will not be a good thing to actually grab the chain so this is why we grab this one here um, the leader line or the I don't know what you call that 
the pickup line. So sometimes the pickup line is <laughs> yeah, pickup line for a mooring wall, not for a goal. Um, you just need to make sure that the, the line that you attach to is good and then also dive in a mooring ball because that can also go wrong if you don't get the right don't assume that the mooring ball the line below the mooring ball is good so let's now go and check what can go wrong when you when you catch a ball and also what goes below the the mooring ball um, because there's a lot of technology for a mooring ball to be a good mooring ball. So let's go check below. Where is our... There's the guy, he's going to hand us the ball which is going to make life a little bit easier because it's quite tricky picking up those balls, they're quite heavy So I am going to try my very best to record this This whatever they do. Giving instructions, she's got her headphones on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pull this thing back. She's giving you know instructions to Bert to go forward and backwards. Okay, okay, this is much easier. You're not in. Tell him go back. It's good. It's good. You're not good. You're not good. Go. Give it to me. Give it to me. Come to it. After to after to after to after to after to. Tell him go back. After to after to. Go back. Go back. Go back. Okay. It seems like he didn't hook it properly. So we're gonna go back and see if. Okay. Stop. 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 Just making sure that it's hooked on properly. Okay. Otherwise, yeah, we'll be we, floating we just now. Well, yeah. Perfect. Perfect. There we go. Okay. And now they're going to go back a little bit. Okay. To make sure everything's hooked properly. There we go. Das ist los, bin drei. Frick is busy tying a third line because one of the other boats next to us mentioned that the, the, the line that we tied on the mooring ball 
Um, there's only two of the three um, ropes still intact. So we, we've added a third rope. Well, Frick is busy adding a third rope to make sure that CC doesn't drift um, into another postcode um, while we're all, all sleeping. Once that is done, then we can enjoy this spot. Sisu's moored here on the mooring ball over there in front. You can see the mooring ball. And far less boats now than it was here yesterday. But we are going to that place over there to see if there's a mooring ball on that side. So let's go check it out. Looks like we've got the mooring ball. But the sea is a little pretty crazy for Tipex. <laughs> it is. That's too much to remember. <laughs> <laughs> but he also used to live in South Africa. Yes, Can you believe it? Aqua Park. How cool is that? So he was my yeah. dive buddy this morning. And he was very, very considerate. It was completely, well, to me, zero vis. Yeah, couldn't see So he nothing. took my hand like this and he guided my hand so that I can feel with my hand what's happening there at the bottom. So I think that was pretty awesome. Thank yeah, you. No problem. So at least then in my mind I could form a picture. Yes. But now he's going to draw us a picture to explain to us exactly what happens there at the bottom. So sure. Here you go. So you can talk while you... Okay. So we have... Let's say this is the water level. And uh, your boat is sitting on top. And we have the mooring ball right here. And this is the, the timble that you normally, your rope goes through, right? Yeah. And at the bottom, the rope goes all the way through the buoy, come down. Now, for a mooring, uh, it's recommended that it's 1.5 or two times the length of the boat. I know when it comes to uh, setting an anchor, it's... 1.5 is the ratio or 1.4 based on whether you have rope or chain but with moorings it's quite different because you're using uh, most of the time a six millimeter chain with one inch rope or one and a quarter rope heavy duty mooring because you don't know exactly what boat you're going to get in it so you always got to be prepared for big boats as well so with this 
Uh, here it's roughly about 30 feet, which is close to 10 meters, so let's say 10 meters in total. Yeah. So it comes all the way down, and this is spliced with a timble here as well. Now from the timble, you have a swivel. Now this swivel allows the top part to spin 360 degrees based on the direction of wind and current. So uh, this prevents the chain from wrapping around each other so it wouldn't break or twist uh -huh. or corrode on itself. Uh -huh. So that's where you have to check for chafing? Yes. Okay. So after the swivel then you get an, a shackle that connects the swivel and the chain coming down. So the chain roughly it's between 15 to 25 feet and uh, it's as I said 16 mil chain so it's heavy duty chain but these ones are not 16 mil these are 14 mil chains which we use two lengths of 14 mil chains because they're two different sand screws so it's connected to one sand screw here you connect it with a shackle a big shackle and the sand screw they're very huge I'll, I'll send her a picture of it later on <laughs> so it's so the shaft of the sand screw it's two inches thick the length of it is 12 feet and there's a big 14 inch helix blade at the bottom a huge blade like this so if it, it sucks into yes it, yeah. and and here is quite it's it's a decent holding so once it's in all the way down there's nothing gonna take it out you actually have to dig around it to get the thing out because the suction is so the force is so much you can you you can you can pull it out because <laughs> three of us from a diving company had to take one out and we took three days to take one out wow three days digging and trying to unscrew it we couldn't unscrew it so we had to dig around it that's amazing. <laughs> yes. Yeah, because I was worried and I said to him the wind was hectic the other day and he said not to worry. But yeah, I must so, say, we so didn't move. There you have a big helix blade and there's a little shaft here with a, a sharpened point so it will go Guide down. it in. Yes. Guide it in. And so basically the seabed will be right here. This is the seabed. Mm -hmm. So this is lying on the seabed and then this goes directly into the seabed and then there are two of them all all of them here are designed that way you have two big sand screws like this and there's a second chain from the swivel to the straight to the sand screw so those two chains won't fail one another no nope. And on top of that, you have a damper weight, which is a block. It's, it's th three feet long and two feet wide. Now the depth of it, I'm not sure was the depth because, or the thickness of the block because it's sitting in the mud, so I can't really see it. And that's the one that I felt? Yes. 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 I could feel that one. Yeah. Yes. So that is also connected to this to the swivel by a short piece of chain which is about three to four feet long and the block is like this and there's an eye in the middle and you hook the chain onto it uh -huh. so it's a kind of rectangular block that's sitting there so how it's designed is whenever the mooring gets weight or there's a lot of gust or wind and the boat pulls the mooring the block will start lifting up and slow the speed of the boat down and bring it back down softly but these boats are not that heavy and there hasn't been any heavy winds lately so none of the block has ever lifted off the ground so far none of them which means and he reckons, the moorings are doing their job. And he reckons our 23 tons is nothing. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're one of the heaviest boats in here at the moment. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's and just, it's nothing. 
it's just pulling on the chain, but it's not lifting the block at all. Not at all. No. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. So that is what happens down here. Yes. And that keeps everything together. Yes. That's that's one Thank system. Thank you. That no is problem. explaining it to me. Okay, you're welcome. And you're, have you got another system? Uh, yes, there is There is another system, which uh, just across at Whisper Cove, Whisper Cove Marina, I, I'm the diver for their moorings as well. So, um, he has same boy system with the rope, Yeah. but below you have, instead of the 14 mil chain that's here, we use 16 mil chain, okay, so which is bigger chain bigger chain and the block it's it has five sides oh. yes so his block is a pentagon block which is about four tons and how the sides are designed they are slanted so once it's in the mud it and the suction happens there's no way you can lift that block out of it no way oh, that's very clever <laughs> yes so that yeah, is a better one. Yes. It's similar to what Port Louis has as well, because we put on block in Port Louis as well. Okay. And it's the same blocks. And have, how many screws have they got? Oh, uh, no, no sand screws. No sand screws? No, because okay. you can't move the block. <laughs> Although okay. I like that, the yes. idea of a sand screw, that also... Yes. In, in places like this, it, because it, it's expensive to... Uh, get a barge, get a crane uh. to load the block onto the barge, then you get a tug to tow the barge around here, uh -huh. then you have to get a small crane on the barge to take the block off, put it in the water, then you get lift bags to keep the block float before you drop it down. So it's expensive that way. It's a big job. It is. It is. <laughs> <laughs> but this is, either of these are, are Good enough. Yes, I know yes, with the other blowers yes, well. Um, yes. The, the problem with the sand screws is if you don't screw it all the way down to the seabed where the cuff just on the seabed, yeah. if you leave it halfway or two feet, that's where it's weak because mm. when, when it's pulled, the boat is going to bend it and keep bending it and keep uh. bending it until it's break or it's going to pull out. So it's got to be completely down, 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 down. Have to down. be, yes. Yeah, yeah. The cuff just have to be like. Yeah. Right. But and you say that's 12 feet. 12 feet. So that's pretty low. It's taller than the, the average person. Yes. Okay. <laughs> that makes feet. me feel better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I will send you a picture. Thank so you. So you see exactly oh, we'll what it, it is. in the video. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's big. It's r and it's heavy. Trust me. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much for your time. No problem. And thank no you problem. for remembering to come and fetch me to go down with yeah, you. Yeah, sure. <laughs>